On today's video, we're going to be talking about a few new products from Inkbird. We've got the pole or pond uh, temperature sensor, their hub, and also their readers. Stay tuned. So first up on the video, we'll be showing you through how some of the sensors connect and work with each other. And then we'll go into some more in depth around how the application works and how we connect all these different devices together. You may well want to use these devices when uh, for, for tank temperature uh, readings and alerts to your phone so you know if something's gone wrong with your heater. That's a really good little device uh, for it to work on. And they also have such a, a good range uh, throughout the house as well that you can have your fish room one at the house and they detect the other end as well. So you don't have to go into the room even to take a, a look to see what's going on. This will tell you information. And it's a hub that you can bring all the devices together in one place. Really nice piece of kit. Let's crack on with the detail. Comes in a nice little box. This is the ITH-20R. When you go inside, you'll find we have one screen and then the sensor which goes to the screen it comes just as the pair then as an addition you can buy extra sensors by themselves which is just the same as this unit here underneath the sensors um, you find a little screwdriver and then one of the actual probes which will be connected then into the, the sensor i'll show you that in a second okay with the actual sensors uh, they will work just by what's uh, around them, close to the system, it has the little air vents in them where it's taking its reading from. Um, it will flash every now and again also to say when uh, a, a reading has been sent to the main display unit. It then has a little port, just a little jack at the bottom where it comes with it, uh, an extra external cable. So if you might want to put this in um, uh, probably a fish tank, uh, that, that's what I would use it for, but I think you can also maybe use it for reptiles and uh, other such things. Um, so yeah, very handy. It will go in the water fine. And then if you go back to your actual display unit, sorry if I get out of the light, but uh, what will happen now on the out option, it cycles through, so external. I just plugged this in so it's a bit warmer, so it's, that's why it's um, temperature reading is not accurate yet. But, uh, but yeah, that's quite cool how it cycles through, just to give you an idea. Okay, to give you an idea of the comparison between the different sensors, um, this is what came in the box. So this is saying um, this sensor here is reading 18.4 with a humidity of 61. The actual uh, unit itself here, the, the, the display, so it's 18.5, so pretty similar, and 70%. So yeah, reasonable difference on that. Um, if we look at another one, which I have, um, this is for a pool. Uh, this is, don't worry about the outside because <laughs> not worried about that, but um, in the room is saying 18.9. So between the three, we got the lowest reading of 18.4 to 18.9 and humidity somewhere between 61 and 70. So um, yeah, th th there's not a huge difference. They say there's about a, a degree out. I, I would say I'm a little bit more disappointed maybe in the humidity. Um, being 9% completely different, that's not great. But um, anyway, it's uh, it's not too bad. Uh, so uh, yeah. Let's talk about distance uh, for the units now. So I have one of these outside currently, a um, unit which is probably a good 100 feet away and uh, through several walls as well. And it's picking up the signal fine very easy to it, when you first turn them on just have them nearby they'll automatically connect so you don't have to mess around too much but yeah pretty pretty good signal so this is the pool sensor i have the wireless uh, one rather than the bluetooth version um, this is quite good because it shows me the battery not only of just the display but also the pool sensor itself as well so both are currently low um, temperature is outside in the in the water quite clearly water temp and that what's obviously displayed in the room now okay so here's the pool sensor it's pretty straightforward um, reasonably compact uh, you'll have the battery uh, sensor on it which is pretty good to have that there it's current temperature reading and the channel it's connected to on the unit itself 
uh, unscrew and you'll see there'll be a place for the uh, two AA batteries uh, as a uh, transmit button on there as well if you're having problems trying to sync it for any reason and then just screws back on the top uh, pretty pretty straightforward piece of kit and seems to be working quite well okay this is the Inkbird IBS M1 this unit uh, is used to connect all your sensors together and then allow you to view on your phone and I'll show you what that looks like in a minute as you can see right now I have two devices or sensors connected up to it it's showing it is on Wi-Fi all pretty reasonable to set up nice small unit easily uh, to, to hide somewhere uh, it connects via a USB-C connector which is great that's the, the new format coming through um, so yeah a great little unit to, to give you uh, access to your phone you don't don't have to worry about having Bluetooth and being range of Bluetooth and you can be out and about and still get alerts uh, and things like that but I'll go through the app now for you okay so here we are in the iOS version of the Inkber Pro application make sure you got the Pro on here you'll see uh, the different devices I have connected we're going to be looking at the IBS Dash M1s the hub um, you will see a few things on the page around around the temperature of the weather which is a nice little feature sunset sunrise hit the plus button and here you will be able to enter the new device so just select it and it will go through a wizard to uh, enter it back on the home page here we now just double click on the IBS dash M1 and that will go through to see the different devices attached to it okay so once we've selected in these are all the different sensors that you have connected up. I have two currently set, selected. Um, there are uh, options up to four different sensors on this particular one device. You'll see the first one you can label up the name of the sensor. Here I'll grow out tank, take a photo of that as well. Your battery, also the temperature itself. Um, you'll be able to see the trend. And on the one at the bottom here, you've also got the external temperature and the uh, humidity so if we go into the settings on one of the devices here you can see where you change the name to however you'd like it you can also set the intervals as to how long you'd like it to refresh obviously the longer the, um, you set it the more battery life you'll get out of the device then you can set up um, look at your alarm history I haven't got any at the minute but this is where you would then set up the alarms themselves so you can enter in a lower or upper threshold so I'll just click on to, to change that put that up to a different to freezing point I don't need to go down that low and also I don't want the max anywhere near 60 degrees Celsius so you can then go through and choose to have that on the different aspects of the sensor um, and it will then pop up with a nice uh, alarm on your phone if it uh, breaks that threshold exactly the same uh, you can then change the temperature correction value so if you are finding that it's slightly out you can adjust it here you'll also be able to then change the threshold for the humidity settings just like you did with the temperature and the same with the correction value as well for humidity okay so save that back to the main menu now you can look at the temperature records which is a very good feature so you can see what it has been doing and you're not seeing any big swings so the historical data they call it um, I haven't had this one on for very long, but you can see uh, the trend which it's following, which is quite nice. You can obviously go back and forth between different days, set periods of time, and then what's also quite useful, you can export it to a CSV file as well, if you so choose. Here in the logger, you can then put down certain events, so you can record that there was a big temperature swing because maybe the heater failed, so you know for your records. That's a nice little feature as well to have. Well, there we have it, folks. I hope you enjoyed that roundup of the uh, Inkbird devices. Um, I personally now been using them for a uh, few weeks and I found them pretty good and pretty good value for money, especially with the amount of fish tanks and uh, external ponds and things that I have. Just a, a very flexible product. Let's hope they stand up the, the test of time. Please give me your thoughts and comments on the device below in the comments. I will keep you updated on how they perform over time as well. Please let me know of any other products that you might be interested in me reviewing. I'd be happy to do so. Make sure you hit that like bell 
and also subscribe to the channel for more updates uh, in the world of fish keeping. Thanks very much for watching.